Are you too busy? Too stressed out? Unhealthy? Then this is the place for you. Welcome to Balanced Living for Busy Professionals, where we help you create wellness and balance with a holistic approach that will work for you, even with the busiest of schedules, so you can live the life you want. And now, here's your host, Diane Randall. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. And if you're new to the show, welcome. It's so exciting to have you here. As you know, my intention is to give you inner tools and strategies to help you create a life that you want. Today's topic is certainly a great topic to help you in your life. I'm so excited that we're talking about living a plant-based lifestyle. Now, what do I mean when I say a plant-based lifestyle? Basically, I'm talking about only consuming foods that don't have a face, they're grown in the ground, and they don't have a mother or they haven't had a mother. This simple three statements help me to simplify. So just to give you a visual of of what what I mean when I say plant-based living, but I really want to talk to you today. And and my guest is here to talk to you about plant-based living. She inspired me to change my eating habits when I wasn't feeling my healthiness. It was at a time when I certainly didn't know where to turn with the medical industry. I was going to doctor after doctor. They really couldn't find anything. And my guest, who is my friend, shared information with me. She shared a documentary called Eat. Uh, She educated me in ways that I had never, ever known. So since that time, um, I've changed my lifestyle. And I even went further to get more educated into what plant-based foods were really about and and what those words really mean to me and to spread the word. So my guest, Pamela Bradford, who is a busy professional, she owns a training and development company, and she's a plant-based advocate. Her mission is to encourage, inspire as many people as possible to eat more plant-based foods. And she's here today to help me answer some of your questions about plant-based nutrition and to share information on her journey, as well as how you can start your own journey from the traditional standard American diet to eating more plant-based foods, which we call a plant-based lifestyle. Pamela, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Diane. It's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to talk with you and your guest. I am just elated you were here. And when I thought about this show and I got these questions, I said, Pam would be the perfect person to come on because you are a busy professional. You are busy in your life, but yet you were able to transition to a plant-based lifestyle and you continue. And not only that, you educate and share information with other people. So I want to thank you for being here. You are quite welcome. You know, this is one of my favorite topics and it's, uh, of the utmost importance. So it's my pleasure and glad to to talk with your guests at any time. Well, thank you for being here. I'd like for you to tell the listeners your journey to plant-based living with your busy life, with what you were eating. What was your journey like? My journey initially was stopping uh, the eating of meats, meaning beef and pork, that was my initial step. And I had did that for about five, maybe six years. So just cut out the uh, the beef and the pork, and I thought I was really, you know, making a major step. And then I, uh, what was it? I believe my husband had initially got ill, and we saw the video eating that you just mentioned. And that just educated us in a whole different level as far as what healthy eating was. 
So I learned from that that uh, chicken had as much fat in it almost as beef. <laughs> I learned the uh, toxins that were in seafood because I was a big shrimp eater and a big fish eater. So I just learned that, oh, my God, we had taken some steps, but there was just definitely a lot more that we needed to eliminate out of our diet to become healthy. So that was that was the journey. I, at that point, I um, stopped eating the fish and the chicken and really focused on plants at that point, eating the vegetables, eating the beans, the grains, and the fruits. Well, it's so interesting that you say that because when I so eat, <laughs> I really got uh, some answers about, wow, how people are sick. And, and, and it also gave me some insight as to what may be happening to me, even though I didn't have the heart attack or some of the other things that were in uh -huh. the documentary. But I can say now, as I look back, I was certainly headed down that path and didn't even know. So... I'm just so absolutely we we all were <laughs> we we all, we all were. were and and thank God that it's people like you and other people now who can educate and teach people people that are willing to be open to hearing something else besides uh that they're sick and that the doctor uh, wants to load them up on med. So I I think it's really a good thing. I know I talk about my journey. Uh, to eating healthy. And I was really, really sick for a long time and didn't really know it. So I'd say fast forward, what, about 10 years, maybe. Um, I mm -hmm. am more healthy than I've ever been. And I was pretty young uh, when we started. And mm -hmm. something else happened. Something else happened that I did not expect. Yes, I got healthier. But Pam, I started looking at the animals. I started seeing animals like I see human beings. Uh -huh. I noticed that they they love their kids. <laughs> they play. <laughs> you know, it took it gave me a deeper insight to I guess I was right. able to step back and see that. So uh -huh. it's it's pretty important, not just for for health, as I'm understanding, and I'm still learning, but also for the environment, for right. the for the animals, as well as for our health. Because as you know, heart disease and diabetes are like the number two diseases that are really uh, decimating people, millions and millions Absolutely. and millions of people. So- Absolutely. What? And it's so sad that, I'm sorry, that That's okay. um, we are killing ourselves at the table and not even realizing it, meal by meal, eating the American way. Meal by meal. You're, you're, right. Well, and, and, and it's also, uh, and this leads into one of the questions that I have from a listener. This person said they really want to start eating uh, more plant-based but the question that they ask is, how do you reprogram your mind to change toward making better food choices? This is a big one, Pam. Can you help us with this question? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that healthy eating requires a change in how you do food. You really have to uh, have a different perspective about food because there's, there's this love for having everything being uh, succulent and extremely uh, appetizing and fatty. And I mean, there's a love and a passion for that. And when you make the decision that, okay, I want to eat healthy, food has to be something that we, we have to um, live to eat instead of eating, I'm sorry, eat to live instead of living to eat. By that, I mean not waking up in the morning and thinking about, oh, my God, what am I going to eat for lunch and what am I going to eat for dinner versus thinking about how can I nourish my body today? How can I nourish my body better today than I did yesterday? And getting on this journey of living to take care of your body, living to improve your health, living to uh, so that you can live longer, live healthier. 
Um, no one wants to live until their, let's say, 70s or 80s, but you're so sick, you're in a nursing home, or you can't walk, or you're not in your right mind, or not even making it to 70 or 80. You know, that's the opposite. So it's, it's number one, having a whole different perspective about eating, looking at ways to nourish your body by eating foods that are, are nourishment instead of just full of fat and full of, uh, and full of calories and um, just appetizing. It tastes good. And I, I, I think that's the challenge nowadays is that we're so used to, oh, my God, this tastes great. Well, sometimes we have to eat things that may not tastes so great, not that uh, eating healthy can't taste good, but for example, I may eat uh, a bowl of broccoli, raw broccoli, and I do this most days a week, um, because it's good for me. Is it the most appetizing thing I've ever eaten? No, but it's good for me, so I eat my raw broccoli. It's full of fiber and full of um antioxidants and good for my skin. And it just does so many things for me in terms of nourishment that I eat it. And I do, there are other things that I also eat because they're good for me. So my focus is on uh, eating so that I can live a longer life and a, a better quality of life instead of just, you know, chugging out on some pizza. <laughs> right. So it's number one, it's, it's a mindset change. It's a mindset change, and what I hear you saying is it's really going inside and being more thoughtful about why do you want to be here on the planet? What's important? Absolutely. What's important? Yeah. And then looking at that and and saying, and taking responsibility. Uh, I, I, right. I, I feel, and, and there's uh, studies and things that, there are a lot of messages at bay, which is why we can't stop eating, as well as the way, and if you eat processed foods, uh, mm -hmm. that, that they're prepared, and in those processed foods, there are ingredients, and I'll just say that make certain that you can't just eat one M&M, for example, <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, that that our culture encourages us to eat all day long. The TV programs, Absolutely. the chef programs, food is mm -hmm. everywhere. Food is celebration. Like you said, food is love. Food is everything in mm -hmm. our society. So it's really, like you said, taking a mindset change as to, first of all, what is your health like? And can you make a correlation between what you eat and wh what you eat, what's in your plate versus eating more plant foods. And I will tell you, I'd say this year, I've had more people than ever because they're sick, because they have heart disease, because they mainly diabetes, they want to change. Mm -hmm. They want right. to change because they want to live. And not only that, the health care, the medicine is so expensive expensive to sustain them. So I do see uh, uh, some change in the air and some minds being changed to a certain extent. Right. I mean, people are becoming more and more desperate. You're right. Once the illnesses are in effect, now they are sometimes, sometimes, like you said, looking for other ways instead of the medications because they're not getting the results. Oftentimes, the medications may make improvement in one area, but now their kidneys are failing or something else may, may happen as a result of the medication. So that's not uh, the natural purpose of our body is not to be drugged up. So that really is a very, very short-term solution. And these drugs are being prescribed for as a lifetime solution. Yes. So that is definitely not the route to go. Um, so, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, we need to focus on diet and, um, I don't know, I, I kind of play games with it in mm -hmm. terms of healthy eating mm -hmm. because, I mean, to your point, what's in the food is very addictive. So the carbs, the sugar, the fat, are those are addictive elements that have been intentionally added to food that makes us all crave more of that. That's why it's so hard to turn away from it. So we have to be very intentional and plan our meals 
plan what we're going to eat. Let's say you're going to a wedding, for example, and you know, oh my God, what are they serving at this wedding? You know, um, you have to plan that I'm going to eat the vegetables at the wedding and I'm going to bypass the beef or the chicken or whatever else they may have on that plate. And perhaps you want to let the person uh, that's giving the, getting married, let them know that I'm a vegan or a vegetarian. Can you have a vegetarian meal there for me? So plan ahead. Be intentional about it. Um, do things like having healthy snacks with you. Let's say if you're going to be out on running errands all day long, have some healthy snacks with you so that when you get hungry, you've got some fresh nuts or a, a nut trail or apple or something to eat. And uh, maybe go to plan to go to your favorite uh, restaurant or, or someplace in route so you can get a healthy meal. So it has to be intentional. You have to uh, change your mindset. And the other thing I was saying is that I cannot have a make a game for myself is that if I've, um, I'm eating decent today, I just keep upping the ante, keep upping the ante, making sure I'm drinking enough water, making sure I'm getting my fiber in making sure that I'm eating uh, healthy and minimizing my fat because you can be a unhealthy vegetarian. Oh my goodness. People don't, think of, <laughs> <laughs> people don't think about the fact that, Oh, I'm not eating meat, but uh, you're eating cheese. You're eating uh, potato chips, perhaps a lot of sugars, uh, desserts, whatever. So you can being healthy. You really, really have to watch the fat. So you should be eating quality food, not just eating food. And it's not just about not eating meat and fish. Exactly. And today, more so than ever, right at this moment in time, so many companies are on the bandwagon of, of plant food or vegetarian, vegan and mm -hmm. vegetarian. And you really, really, really have to pay attention to the ingredients mm -hmm. that are in your food because just because it says 100% organic, vegan, vegetarian may not necessarily mean that that's so. Uh, some people call, some people think, and, and this is the climate we're living in. I know when I first became plant-based, it was kind of easy. It wasn't a whole lot of things to eat, mm -hmm. right? So you right. could easily do it. But now there's uh, vegan donuts, there's vegan cake. Oh I mean, there's all kinds of good <laughs> vegan food. So you really, really really, really have to be careful. And, and and I heard you say you need to eat more whole foods, foods that are grown right. in the ground that have mm -hmm. that haven't had a mother. Right. You know, that that have <laughs> that, that, that have no face, you know, no, you're right. That that is the simplest way to do it as well as, you know, look at the ingredients. And I tell my my students when I have a class is read the labels. If I can't mm -hmm. tell you anything else that's most important, if you eat something that's in a box or in a package, read the label. Right. Read the label and understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And chances are, if you read the label and it has uh, ingredients in that product that you can't pronounce, it's something you should not be eating. So, if, I mean, if it's good, clean food, the ingredients should be easy to pronounce and things that you understand what they are. So anything that I see that's, you know, 15 syllables long, I'm like, nope, <laughs> this is not <laughs> something I should be eating. So that's a good guide. Chances are if it's in a, a, a box or can, you probably shouldn't be eating it. I mean, there's just very, very few items when you go down the main aisles in the grocery store that are really healthy. Right. So a guide is just to go on the outskirts, get your vegetables, get your frozen items and get out of the grocery store. <laughs> Cause it's probably not a whole lot of other things that right. are truly healthy. And you've answered some of the second question. It's I've heard a lot about plant nutrition. What is it exactly? And how can it benefit me and my health? You have spoken a lot about the benefits, but now it's not that hard to learn about the benefits. You have websites, Fork Over Knives. Mm -hmm. Yes. You yes. have T. Colin Campbell. You can even ha get recipes. There's a website called Oshi Glows. I remember when I mm -hmm. first started, I would go and get those recipes. You can easily see what does it mean to be 
plant-based? What does it mean? What's in the food? You don't have to go to school like I did, but you can definitely today figure out what's good. Figure right, out what's right. good. Absolutely. You're right there. We have the internet at our fingertips and, you know, most of us have it accessible on our phones even. So you can easily find out uh, what healthy eating is in terms of uh, groceries that you should buy and meal selections. Even you can get food delivered to your house. It can be raw. It can be cooked. So nowadays it is much easier to eat healthy uh, than it was when you and I started. You're absolutely right. Speaking of food delivery, for the past year and a half, I've been a client of a company called a company in California where they deliver uh, Mm -hmm. prepared uh, uh, meals. And I tell you, it took, because I travel sometimes for work, for for what I do, I literally have taken all the drama out of trying to figure out what in the heck am I going to eat because I'm going to a town that really doesn't have any type of, yeah. of of plant-based, vegan, vegetarian. I mean, I've been to small cities that didn't even have a salad bar in a grocery store because that's usually, I'll say, at least I, I can go to the grocery store and get a salad. But I learned that that's not necessarily true either. You know? That is smart, though. Yeah. I mean, that's being intentional. It's you know, you're planning ahead. Very sure. intentional. Yeah, you're making sure that you'll eat quality food. And you talk about the mindset. We've been Mm -hmm. conditioned through the culture that you want to hurry up and get something quick. But it's like Mm -hmm. you said earlier, you have to change that mindset and be more intentional about what you eat. Because nothing's more important than your health. I mean, at the end of the day, regardless of the job that we do or our families, if we are not healthy, we can't perform those jobs. We can't be the parents that we need to be. Whatever that role is, we, we really cannot do it. And we have to take a stand because, you know, uh, I think um, misery kind of likes company. So you'll find people will be very resistant in some arenas of you not eating what they're eating. So you have to have a made up mind that this is the way I want to eat. Don't want to be offensive to you, but this is my choice. Uh, there's definitely pushback sometimes. And, uh, and, I'm off. and it's courage. Ahead, it's it's a lot of courage to, mm-hmm. to be the model for that family. I know right. in the You're archive, exactly right. in the archives of the podcast, I had an interview with Lord Dietrich, uh, Fork Over Knives. And we talked mm-hmm. about how if your family doesn't eat, uh, plant based, that's okay because you can introduce the plants and, yeah. and, and still follow some of the same routines that you have done. You just introduce slowly mm-hmm. the healthier version of whatever you're cooking. And I love that and, idea. And that's a great thing to do uh, for your family. And that's certainly what I've had to do with my family. It's a perfect thing to do for these holidays get, get, get togethers, for example. You show up with a healthy dish. Well, I've tried um, that one. <laughs> really? It, it didn't work for you? <laughs> well, this is my family. I, you know, we 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 live a, sort of in the south. I'm from sort of in the south, and uh-huh. food is everything. Okay, and I showed right. up, and this is funny. I showed up with some. Uh, they were like uh, chicken wings. I said, "Let me show up with some meat, meat kind of." Okay. Okay. And they, the wonderful thing was they looked at it. You got to be strong with this kind of stuff. (laughs) You got (laughs) to be brave because they talked about that chicken. It was actually funny. Oh my God. They talked about it. They did, you know, it was like I brought some poison and and put it in a plate. But I will say, I will say fast forward. This was like three years ago. Okay. When my family comes to town, they know me because I've just modeled my own behavior. I have not mm-hmm. put it on anybody else. And what right. what happens now is they will go to a vegan restaurant. They don't mm-hmm. fight. They they will go. They will have that experience. Right. They will taste the food. They're not vegans and vegetarians or plant-based, uh-huh. but they will eat. And I love that because over time, right. They've changed. Mm -hmm. And all I did was model 
what I feel I need to do for my health at this moment. And in that, Great. I've taught them a whole lot, but it was funny the first time I took a dish <laughs> well, <good laughs> to Thanksgiving of all right. meals. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was that was definitely courageous of you to show up with uh, a meat substitute. Oh, Thanksgiving! <laughs> so, but good for you. I mean, that that yeah. you made a, a positive impact with them, and now they're a lot more susceptible or willing. They're willing to eat vegan food. They're willing, and and yeah. I I I don't hide it. They and now you know it's been many years, but. I'll admit in the beginning for me, it was a struggle, especially around the holidays, because, you know, when my mm -hmm. family holiday is food, you know, with my sisters, right. my family preparation is done. I mean, it's it's awesome. Right. But I mm -hmm. had I had changed. So I had some em I guess emotionally I had to also come to terms that food is no longer why you know, the thing that brings me together with my family. So it made me dig deeper right. into the relationships, you know, mm, uh, it, it really, really did. Uh -huh. Yep. So very interesting. I, I have had to do something similar. I cook the, the vegetarian or the vegan options, and then we'll also have some of the things that they want. So uh, sometimes my family will come to my house or I will go to theirs, but we have a combination of food. So, and sometimes they don't know, you know, what the dish is. They just know it's something. <laughs> right, <prepared>. right, right. <laughs> yeah. So over time, they're, you know, as long as it tastes good, then they are willing to try it. So like you said, they've come a long way. And my mom has made great strides. She lives down here with us now. She's made great strides to eating a more vegetarian friendly diet, whereas she's, like you mentioned, from the South and used to eat the pig feed and the, you know, hog head cheese and you name the chitlins. I mean, everything. So Whereas now she is not eating that anymore. Uh, she's not 100% vegetarian, but she certainly eats vegetarian a lot more than she did in the past. So it's, it's great. Well, as you said, it's a process. It is uh -huh. a process of letting go. And it's not just letting go. It's the emotional attachments. It's a, there are a lot of attachments to food uh, one, uh -huh. uh, besides, you know, the disease that comes to it. So like you said, the mi the mindset change is is really, really huge. Now, tell the listeners, where do you live? I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is where we connected. Mm -hmm. But yes, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we've been here now for five years. So in Charlotte, because I hear the statistics on the South in terms okay. of healthy eating. What what's going on in uh, Charlotte specifically? Charlotte is they don't know what vegetarianism is, let alone veganism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I am challenged every day to eat healthy here, as far as um, you know, having to be very strategic about it. Um, for example, at meetings, I have to, we have a lot of lunch meetings, so I always have to talk to the person who's ordering the food to make sure that they get me something that I could eat. Perfect example, just last week, I didn't do that, and food came, there was nothing there for me to eat. <laughs> so I had to go to Panera Bread and get me a salad. So the Charlotte is just not, they have not advanced. I mean, they're still on the uh, fried foods and the beef and the you know, the traditional Southern foods. They have not made that transition at all. We've got a few places we can go to here, um, my husband and I, but um, their mindset is nowhere near Chicago even. And I know Chicago has a ways to go from the West Coast. The West Coast is very advanced, but no, the South is still pretty far behind. <laughs> Which is awesome because that's why you have a lot of work to do and you can do yeah. a lot of work in the South. So it's just great that even though your community hasn't really embraced plant-based eating, it, it sounds like, I know we talked that you are constantly trying to educate and encourage and absolutely. that is just so awesome. So yeah, awesome. Absolutely. I, I always hear of people talking about like you mentioned earlier, health issues or just wanting to 
uh, improve their weight and appearance. We haven't even talked about that, some of the benefits. Yeah, um, yeah. And the, the illnesses, wanting to address some of those overall. And I get many opportunities to share with them, to share uh, things I'm doing. And I, I get questions about that. What are you doing? You know, they are complimenting me on my appearance and uh, asking me how I can stick to the diet. So many doors are open to share with them about plant-based diet and, and living a healthier lifestyle. And do you feel that's the best way to support people is to be a role model and answer any questions that they may have versus judging, you know, people, you see people when a lot of times when they learn something, they just push it on everybody else. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I think that, um, first of all, I think you have to meet people where they're at. Yeah. Um, everybody's at a different stage. And I mean, there is a severe love for food. So you have to really be aware yeah. of that because yeah. people will be very offended yes. sometimes when you talk about them doing something different than what they're doing. Right. So you, every, everyone's different. Everyone's uh, level of uh, receptiveness is different. You know, so at one stage, they may be way more ready to hear what you're talking about than at another stage. So I think uh, I try to just meet people where they're at. And that may be a very small thing. Um, they may not be able to make the, the, the leap at one time. So they right. may have to take very small steps to get there where the other person may be able to take bigger steps. So I try to meet them where they're at. That is so awesome because that's important. Uh, just being where you are and just doing, just ch maybe tweaking your favorite dish mm -hmm. to something that could right. be a little healthier. And the good thing is, and this is for busy professionals and you can chime in, there are a lot of restaurants now, such as Chipotle, uh, mm -hmm. even, even some of the fast food restaurants. I don't go to fast food restaurants, but I hear mm -hmm. like even White Castle has a, uh, a veggie really? burger. So people are making strides in changing. Wow. They are I making stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And there are uh, meatless Monday. If you want to, if you're busy, just take one day and, and, and go meatless. There's lots of, lots of choices awesome. out there. You know, that is so good to hear that. Cause see, I don't even hear that in the South. So that's good. For <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, really happening. And, and I think that's it's good. great. And like I said, there's a lot of information on the Internet. Uh -huh. I will put some resources in the show notes that Pam, Pam and I talked about earlier, as well as just some information to help people go and get some valid plant based research, because there is a lot of research out there yes. now about plant based foods. Yes. And it's exciting because it is readily available, really readily accessible. So it's, it's an exciting time now. But the important thing that that you said, and I want to really hone in on, is that eating becomes intentional. Mm -hmm. Knowing what's in your food, knowing what you eat, knowing what the ingredients are, mm -hmm. it's all intentional, but it can become an excellent, excellent habit over time. Right. It can become a habit, and it will become a habit as you become intentional about it and not being so hard on yourself, no one will be perfect. You right. will make mistakes. Right. There will be, you know, you'll have those cravings. And I think, and that's why I mentioned the cravings. The first step is to recognize that you do have cravings. I mean, we do crave sugar. We do crave carbs. We crave the meat. It's a journey. It's a journey to eliminate those things and replace them with healthy plant-based item, items and uh, vegetables, fruits, beans, and grains, and having that be what fills you up. I was just talking to a girlfriend last week who watched uh, the documentary that we just talked about. Uh, can I mention the name of yes, it? Yes, yes. Go right ahead. Uh, so mention the, the What the Health, which is amazing. And she was just blown away. I mean, this is a meat lover. <laughs> um she was blown away. So basically, she's taking it step by step, starting where she's at and eliminating uh, the meat items one by one, meal by meal, basically. 
she's also using a uh, food delivery service so that she doesn't have to worry about planning her meals. So they're, again, having to be intentional about it, taking it day one day at a time, taking it one meal at a time. If you fall off, meaning you eat something that you shouldn't have eaten, eaten just get right back on. You know, some people say, oh, God, I didn't eat right yesterday. So they just keep going for the rest of the week. If you make a mistake, one meal, the next meal, correct it and get right back on track and eat, eat even better for the next meal. And like you said, the meal delivery is excellent if you are a busy a uh, professional in your life because that eliminates all the excuses that, and I say excuse when we don't have time to cook. You can even cook on the weekends, you know, something for the right. week because I, I get mm-hmm. that we're all busy and we really have a short amount of time. But when you factor in being healthy and, 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 and doing what's right for the body, it, it will take a little more time. Definitely takes more planning. More yeah. planning. It absolutely and, takes yes, more planning. Yes, more planning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll scratch more that planning. time thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pam, I am so grateful that you're here today. Thank you for being here and sharing your journey to plant based living, your experiences, uh, your life changing information, and just bringing awareness to living a plant-based lifestyle because it really is a lifestyle. It's not a diet. It's not something short-term that you do and then you go back to something else. It is a Mm -hmm. lifestyle that takes... You are quite welcome. And it's been a pleasure. Uh, You know, this is my passion. Yes. And it's just a joy to be able to share any information that I have with someone else that, that could help someone else. So I'm happy to see that you're... You're uh, having the forum to do this and to do it on a regular basis. So God bless to you and to your guests. It is my passion and my purpose is to teach people how to live the life they want to live. And part of that is being healthy so that you're around to have a life that you love. So Pam's contact information will be in the show notes of this episode. So if you have a question for her, feel free to reach out. She knows everything about being busy and living a plant-based lifestyle. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. That's great. And thank you guys for listening. And I want to know what you think thought about today's episode of Balanced Living for Busy Professionals. I want to hear your comments or voicemail. Leave it right here on the Balanced Living for Busy Professionals website. You know, your feedback helps us to bring you the best topics and information so that you can make the changes in your life. If there's something you want to hear, let us know and we'll certainly bring it to the show. Thank you for listening to Balance Living for Busy Professionals. This podcast is sponsored by DianeRandallConsults.com. If you like this show, the best way to support it is by leaving five star feedback on iTunes. And please feel free to email your questions, comments, and suggestions to feedback at DianeRandallConsults.com. Until next week, Namaste. Thank you.